2008, 2010, and it represents a moment in which very small schools are being brought together. So they're not building the big mega schools, it's not the small rural schools, but they're kind of expanding um, schools in this period of time. Um, <clears throat> there was a lot of construction rubble. It's a town which is expanding. We wanted to make use of the rubble. And also, uh, they knocked down a small building in order to build this building. So we thought, why don't we take the, the bricks from the small building and put it on the roof as a kind of thermal mass and a kind of planting medium. Um, <clears throat> and that's what we did. We, uh, we basically took the rubble. Um, um, Joshua went up there. He was had this theory about, he's from Manchester, so I guess beer is something that, that you don't just drink it, but it solves a lot of things of a problem. So he thought if you put beer into the, the rubble, then it would help um, fertilize it and grow. So he literally did this, and I think it worked quite well. I'm quite surprised. Um, <clears throat> then we, we also, uh, you know, we can frustrate a lot of, um, uh, of government officials um, because we, we like to take very common materials, like in this one, just the, uh, the cinder block, which is usually used for the sheds and the pig pens, and we use it um, to enclose the school, again, working with this um, issue of the courtyard. However, opening up the, um, the school, creating an adaptable classroom, which is next to the canteen, um, where they can eat lunch, there's lectures, um, <coughs> morning exercises. Chinese are very healthy people. Um, and then you see the inside of this, the, this corridor made with this kind of brick, um, this uh, cement screen. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's uh, ugly on the outside, but uh, warm on the inside. That's the kind of spirit we try to go with. Um, you'll see in some of our other buildings. Um, <clears throat> this is a hospital that's recently been completed. Um, <clears throat> in this case, what was nice was since we lack very, f you know, we're not architects with a lot of different ideas, um, uh, lacking very many ideas, this building basically designed itself. It was completely constrained by the site. This is the old hospital next to the road. Uh, and, and this is the problem with generic architecture because right now, you know, it used to be that uh, people who built their own houses, so maybe you would, you know, help me and build my house, and I would come and help you and build your house. It's a process which knits a community together, but it's also an innovative process. Architecture develops that way. That's why I think Bernard Rudolfsky's book is fantastic, because it shows that innovation is literally part of the kind of, um, you know, the, the human gene code. You really don't need architects. But it's only when you start to develop at very, very high speeds, when they abandon building it themselves, we're not coming up with ideas, they're not being passed on, we're hiring people uh, through the money that we've, uh, you know, the villagers that we've, they've made in the cities, and literally importing that urban village model back into the, the rural village itself. So this is a school, this is a hospital, it's the same as a school, it's, uh, it's the public building. Uh, people also live here. Um, people uh, who come to the hospital have to, had to uh, carry their uh, family members up three flights of stairs. So if you got really sick, you, you would hopefully have someone who was still very, very healthy to help carry you to the hospital. Then what this charity did was they, they wanted to build the first completely charitable hospital um, in China. They bought this piece of land, which is an L-shaped piece, piece of land. And what we did was we essentially um, built a new building in this free piece of land, moved the hospital, and knocked down uh, the old building. Now, it was the same exact cost to put in an elevator versus um, to actually do a ramp, uh, which is eventually what we did. Um, and you'll see later that the, the ramp uh, was the big idea where the ramp created space. It was something which solved a very specific problem, but we used it to create a courtyard and also kind of public space. Uh, the bricks are uh, on the outside, are recycled from a, a factory. They don't make these bricks anymore. Uh, they're, they're, um, 
to, uh, I think, labor consuming and also um, it's uh, more polluting. But there, there's a very beautiful um, sort of green brick that we've used here that's recycled. And then the inside, we worked with a, uh, the, the contractor to adapt a very classical um, Chinese uh, screen block, which is a circle and a square. And we developed in our, um, our studio a flexible latex mold that you would have this in um, the circle and a square in elevation, but basically you could push this, uh, this void opening in or out. Um, you know, so we're allowed to have fun as well. Thank God. But actually, it, it worked pretty well. Um, it gave this, um, this entire interior surface, this hospital, a very soft um, screen feeling. It changes the quality of light. Um, people like to believe that, uh, you know, we put every single brick very, very carefully in order to adjust and to carefully calibrate the light, but that's just not the case. Um, <coughs> But it changes. Um, here's the, the, the ramp. And now all, all sorts of people come here. There's, a, there's an old people's home across the street. Kids come here. Um, old people come here because they like to exercise. Uh, they go from this courtyard. It's completely open again to the streets. Most public buildings in China are, are, are enclosed, you know, especially the, the government buildings. And it's also bringing the idea of a kind of open public institution into the rural. Um, <clears throat> and then the roof, so you can come all the way up to the roof um, and use it. This is a, a shot of the interior. As you can see, there's not many uh, sick people, so <laughs> maybe it's working. Um, <clears throat> but this is th that, that's right when they moved in. Uh, another um, contrasting, um, uh, another big issue for us is the relative size of architecture. Um, we already build very small, but the difference between a building um, which is, exists specifically in a site and these much larger scale forces that are happening in, um, in China. Ironically, the construction of huge infrastructures throughout the countryside are creating connections through uh, from town to town, but huge disruptions on the ground level for villages. So uh, this is one place in Sanxi where uh, this is a site, 